My guest today has moved on from fighting in the cage to join the CFC executive team in the role of business development. She is no other than Miranda Danger Granger. How you doing today, Miranda? I'm good. How are you? Can't complain. The inaugural CFC Starway champion now returns home to help build multiple aspects of the company. Uh, yes. The announcement came out in March, and I just talked to you like two weeks ago. And as I mentioned it to other people, like everyone's like, oh, she she's in CFFC again. And I was like, did no one read the <laughs> announcement? Um, because I know when I saw it right away, I was like, perfect person. I think I reached out right away like, to yeah, you. you I was like, oh my God, this is like this makes so much sense. Like, if it wasn't you, it makes sense to be like an Aljo or a Felder, like someone who like yeah. grew in the org went on and then the next step of life comes aboard and you know, now you're in the uh, the position to help others do the same thing yeah. that you did. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it said the inaugural CFC cha- Strawway champion. That didn't last long. The fight didn't. No. And the, the championship <laughs> reign didn't. I don't know. I mean, as soon as you finished the fight in 41 seconds, Punk kind of told you right away, you got the call up already. You're going to Contender yeah. Series. Uh, let's start there. You you know, you got the announcement about going to Contender Series. There is no Contender Series for you. You went right into the UFC. Right. What happened there? Well, so um, originally what I, my understanding is if I had won the fight, I was automatically getting a call to go to the UFC. So I wasn't actually going to go to the contender series. Um, Rob, obviously that changed, like I think a couple days before my fight. And Rob obviously didn't want to tell me that, like going into it to like, you know, he wanted me to have that same mindset of like, you win, you're in. So that's where I was. And then when I won and I got the, um, you know, that, from punk what he told me i think you can see it on my face like i was like okay like because in my mind i had done everything that i needed to do to get to the ufc at that point i didn't think i had to go and um prove myself and at that time the contender series was still relatively new Uh, i obviously now it's like you know it's something that's really good for athletes i think it grows like your fan base and all of that but at the time it was still new and for me that was my i don't know 14th fight in a row including amateurs in kickboxing and I was undefeated so and pretty much all finishes except for like two or three fights so I thought that I had deserved just to get in there um so I actually turned down the contender series uh against some people's advice but I turned it down and then um it ended up working out for me because I got a phone call I want to say like three weeks later I told Rob I was like I don't care I'll I'll defend my title I'll just come back to CFFC I'll keep fighting but I think I deserve to just get into the UFC and uh and yeah and then uh, three weeks later they called me with the Hannah Goldie fight and they're like we have a fight for you in two weeks I'm like let's do it so that's where we went from there that makes sense I I hear that a lot actually too about how you know either um not so much with the contender series because of now where it had grown to now versus Mm -hmm. then um, but a PFL now has their challenger series, which is, I don't even want to say the same thing because only one person walks away with a contract. You can have four great finishes, right. but only one gets the deal. Um, I know like this past season, uh, we had an offer for Greg Velasco to be on the show and something happened and he didn't work out there, but there was also another in the region, uh, like a Pat uh, Brady was offered there. And he basically mm-hmm. told him, no, you can either have me or we'll talk later. Yeah, and that's kind of what I did. And he lucked out also. Like, he got a call after you saw the you saw the testing kind of went a little sour in PFL, and a lot of uh, heavyweight spots opened up, and they gave him the call. And he got to avoid the challenger and went right in and didn't go well. Uh, he ended up getting, like, an ACL blowout on, like, the first or second kick he threw, but he did the same game plan and avoided all that what-if scenario. So that made, makes a lot more sense, too. And, you know, from there, you did three fights in the U- – or – yeah, three. I say three times. Four. Before. It was definitely four. Yeah, four. Um, it would have been five, but I think the one fight fell through at one point as well. Um, and then you know, into the last one, as we just kind of mentioned beforehand, you had Austin. And, yep. Um, you know, a lot different on your end than on my end. My end, it's like, oh, we have a kid. You yeah. have a lot more effort <laughs> put into it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, from there, I looked and around and I did my research and you were kind of even saying going into that fight, like you would, you want to keep going, but you also want to have more kids. Yes. You know, with, with how the last fight went and then at the end of the contract and all the politics aside that go on, on that mm-hmm. end, um, you ultimately did, I guess, I guess, were relieved of the contract, wasn't renewed and then yeah. you made the decision to kind of just. Right. 
move on. I think in in there was parts of me like thinking that even if I had won that fight, that it might I might still do the same thing. Um, I do feel like my time in the UFC was tainted a little bit because of COVID. Uh, I learned a lot about myself, you know, having to fight in the apex with no fans. I realized that like probably 80% of the reason I like fighting is to like put on a show, be in the crowd, feel the energy. So when I was in there without any fans, without any, it's like, you know, it's like a silent sparring session and it's, it's very odd. It's just not, um, it's not the same. So so yeah, I uh, I mean I'm not blaming my losses on that. Obviously, like I didn't do what I was supposed to do. I'm just saying it was it was definitely a different experience than I had anticipated going into the UFC, um, especially coming off my first win in the UFC in, or in uh, New York, like just fighting in that big arena, and then I took my first loss in South Korea, um, but then just going into the Apex, it was just different. And so then um, having to like get, like get myself ready with a daughter. Going into that last fight, I just felt like my priorities had changed and my mindset had changed. Almost like, uh, you know, I just didn't have that same fire going into it, if that makes sense. It does. And you see that yeah. happen. Like, I know a lot of times when you first came back, everyone's like, oh, Mackenzie Dern, Mackenzie Dern. Um, mm-hmm. But if you look at others, like Misha Tate kind of like had her first child and then retired. Yeah. Then, you know, later after she had her second, then she came back because she, she kind of wanted to have that like, I can do the, I can do this mentality. Right. And it hasn't gone so great on her end. Um, mm-hmm. One thing that, you know, mentioned that knowing that you kind of mentioned about, you know, very family focused, when the news did come out that you joined CFSC in the more executive role, you made, you made, made a mention of that, you know, the UFC didn't really give you the family feel that the CFSC does. Yeah. Um, and that, that struck me because obviously I, I didn't fight for them, but just being at shows, all the time um mm-hmm. you kind of pick up on that family aspect like when you go to a couple shows you might get to know some of the people um i've actually been i've been privileged to get to know pretty much everyone at this point um mm-hmm. to the point i think i even did a show without my kid and manny the photographer kind of yelled at me asking like where that yeah. was and i was like <laughs> i didn't know she can come to atlantic city so <laughs> yeah um so like from there you know it made sense family focused and Rob and the, the gang puts together like, the most family situation. Uh, I had the privilege of kind of hanging out with you guys post event down in Tunica, and yeah. it was like a family like dinner. Even though yeah. we kind of sat around, and um, I kind of felt like the fifth wheel because like I was like kind of just like <laughs> invited but not invited, and but it was kind of cool to kind of see that extra side of everyone. And then with that, you know, with the family, you have Austin now. You did mention in previous interviews you want at least one more. Um, with that and with uh Caden being a martial artist as well, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, is that something you would let Austin do too growing up? Be it yeah. you know, fighting or just training? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I really want her to get into some sort of martial arts, like in a, just in a training capacity. Like, I think every kid should get into that. Um, I started Taekwondo when I was four, and I think it just developed me for all my other sports. I played soccer, softball, basketball. Like, I think it just gave me more confidence in who I was. I think it gave me like a better grasp on just like all around athletic ability. So I think um, Austin should be able to know how to defend herself and gain that type of confidence. And I think martial arts gives that to you. Um, So I definitely will get her into the gym. She comes into the gym with me whenever I train um, punch. I got her own little boxing gloves, punches the bag. She like jumps into class, does like, you know, the warm ups and stuff. So um yeah I definitely want to get her in there if she wanted to fight that would be great it would be hard on me uh but I think I'd have to like pass her off I don't know if I could coach her (laughs) but I'm like too competitive and I don't know if I'd want to break that like barrier of like being a mom and being a coach um but I think whatever she wants to do I'm I'm down for it and I would love to just you know I'd obviously love to see her out there and follow in my footsteps but if that's not what she wants then whatever that's awesome and then that's all, you know, I don't, I don't want to say the past because obviously the kid and the family, that's going to go into the future too. But, you know, with this role now, uh, it was kind of stated as business development, uh, which yeah. could be pretty much anything. <laughs> exactly. Um, and as I kind of like have caught on to you at different shows, it is pretty much everything. Everything. You know, you're, you're, the main focus is in the announcement or basically building the female roster um, mm-hmm. prior to Tunica. You shared it and I shared it. Like it was like 776 days before the last 
pro, pro. fight. Mm-hmm. And then with the Bantamweight, I think it was thousands. And I think we said it was like six years at that point. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, you were, weren't even there four months and we already had our first pro females in the cage. Obviously, that we weren't recording down in Tunica. You, we kind of touched on this a little bit, but like, what are your goals for? I mean, obviously, building it is one thing because mm-hmm. there's like a few amateurs that come into play. But what yeah. are your goals for this female division and uh, divisions? What? Division yeah, I mean, I think that right now there's this weird lull in women's MMA where women just don't really have a place that they know they can go and that they're going to succeed. So I think people are just throwing girl fights on their card just to like say they have a girl, you know, like just to like check the box. But like I want to be I want CFFC to be a place where it's like women can come really compete, know they're getting the best competition possible to prepare them for that next level, like in the UFC. Um, I I just think that there's a lot of girls out there that are trying to fight, you know, just get, just to get their record up. And I want to find girls that like want to fight the hardest fights and want to fight the toughest fights because they want to stay in the UFC. They want to like last, you know? And I think CFFC has the potential to do that. We do that a lot with our male roster. We put on some amazing fights, some really tough fights. And uh, you saw in that last women's fight, I mean, that fight was matched very well. And, uh, you know, it it turned out to be a really, really good fight. And she got a great finish. So um, I think, uh, you know, I just want to continue to build off that. And we don't have a woman up there on the on the championship banner. And I want to put some some girls back up there. Yeah, I mean, even looking at that, too, um, I do a, usually after the events, I I missed the last one. I watched the event, but I didn't do my little article I usually do on Sundays any, this time through because um, I was a little disappointed in both cha- – or I shouldn't say both champions. Cedric losing his belt and then uh, Shamel not getting the win. Yeah. I was a little like, damn it. Um, yeah. It was kind of my, my leans on those two. But um, I w- started going through after Tunica and – I had the hardest one with the women's fight because even topology doesn't give women MMA any respect. I know. Uh, you can get rankings, which are usually questionable anyway, but there's no <laughs> rankings for females. There's just a pound yeah. for pound, and that mixes amateur and pro. Um, I mean, even the one that you just referenced, the uh, Rebecca Evans fight, yeah. like I had to just kind of pull from memory girls that i remember watching like for that one like serena the uh the jesus who's with like, yeah. i think she's with invicta i don't know if she's exclusive there like like that makes sense but then yeah. it's also like are you going to match up a a three and oh versus like an eight fight vet does that make I sense know. or do you just do it because like you want to have someone with a belt on the banner are you like going to be doing the matchmaking for females or is that going to still be like combined with like arius and rob and then or rod and then you it's kind of a match of it's kind of a mixed match of all of us we all like we're in a group message when you kind of run ideas you know through each other um i def i found becca and i wanted to get becca a fight i i don't know if you had a chance to hear her story at all but um she went through some some pretty bad heartache that last year and i wanted to give her a shot and i've seen her fight and i knew who she was and uh, i thought cfsc was a great place for that and obviously she she was able to showcase her skills um in that fight so I am trying to find girls like that. Like I'm trying to find girls that like have a story to tell and want to tell it in the cage. And I think, uh, you know, I think I find the girls, I run it through the team. The team likes it. Uh, Rod helped us find her opponent and I thought she was a great matchup for her. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's a group effort. That's what I kind of realized. Uh, whenever I think it's all areas, I hear it. No, Rod was like on the other side. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> can't, can't give him all, all the compliments. Got to spread it a little bit to the other side too. <laughs> Um, can't make Arius's head too big yeah <laughs> he'll <laughs> let you know so outside of that you know I kind of touched on the typ- typ- uh, typologies lack of respect what other barriers do you have I mean c- competitor wise like it does it kind of hit what you hit like a lot of these divisions are kind of just put on there just because I think uh, Bellator has like three straw weights yeah like, th- that's yeah. as good as UFC's featherweight division like they're yeah. there are they and then the I think division? I think with some of these divisions too, they they do they have like three straw weights, and so they're trying to just get the most out of those three straw weights. So they're giving them whoever, and that's not my style. I mean, I want to see 
good fights. I want to see the best fights. And it is a struggle with topology, like trying to find girls, because like you said, they're just ranked randomly. They're placed randomly. Like I have to go to their page and then I have to hit up their manager and then I have to see what weight they're actually fighting at because half the time it says NA, you know what I mean? So it's, there is a lot of challenges in trying to find girls. And then when you do find some girls, either, you know, some are signed, but they're looking for fights, but they can't get out of contracts or, you know, whatever it is. It's, it's been a struggle. Um, I'm, I'm getting some contacts out there. I feel like I'm getting people to start to like, trust me and trust that I'm like, have their best interest at, at heart. So um, yeah, just trying to break those barriers. Yeah. I, I've definitely either heard similar people who like would love to fight with you guys, but are locked into like, an exclusive flex flight deal or they're like they know where they're located like the money might be better in like an evicted because they're near kansas or you know the right. flight and all that and um i was not gonna they're probably not gonna sell tickets as well and like a philadelphia or new jersey that they yeah. can get paid flat with invicta um outside of that another one you mentioned too is market expansions um kind of mm -hmm. how i talked about counting the uh the women's division ADHD kicked in also, and I started pulling names. Um, so currently, CFC has done shows in seven states. Uh, you were part of two different states. You were in New Jersey with Brigada and then out in uh, Coachella, California. Yep. That was the title fight. Um, but outside of that, they did Delaware, Virginia, Florida, Mississippi, obviously Jersey, and then Pennsylvania. Um, any market specific that you're looking at to expand to? I, I would ex assume Washington State. But yeah, yeah we're, looking, looking at? we're looking to get over here into the the West coast. I think, um, Washington has the MMA scene. That's just like waiting to burst open. Uh, we had a lot of stuff shut down during COVID. Um, we have a couple promotions running in here, but I think, I think that we could come in and really make like a splash for, I mean, some of the greatest fighters in the UFC have come from Washington state. You got like Michael Chiesa, Misha Tate, you know, all of those guys, um, Juliana Pena, they're all from Washington. So I think we have a big market here. I think it just hasn't been tapped into, um, and then, yeah, just other other areas around here. I don't know how much I can get into all of that, but um, but yeah, definitely some other some other places around here that would be really big. I could touch on at least one part, and I will say it, so you won't say it. Um, it has been said in another interview elsewhere that the uh, lovely Rowan University intern program. One of the tasks for the team there was to actually look at markets, um, mm -hmm. which explains, you know, kind of cuts out of the some of the busy work that you would have to manually do if you just had the team kind of focus on it. So I'm interested. I I've, I know I've heard a few different markets already leading into the early summer. Um, I'm assuming some of those markets are not opening up quite yet because we're in the middle of summer yeah. <laughs> and the next two events are already labeled. So I know for a fact, we're missing those summer plans that were elsewhere outside of that. You know, there, that was the two main points that you stated in the announcement. Um, I did have one question though that was not related to this role. Um, I know he does have a fight. Are we gonna see Bilal again in the CFC cage? <laughs> yeah, so uh yes, we will see Bilal again. I'm I I would be shocked if we didn't. Uh Bilal ended up signing a contract with the promotion here in Washington, uh Koga. It's who I actually started my pro career with. Um, they're a really good promotion out here. So he has one fight left on that contract. That will be uh, this weekend, actually, on the 29th. And then, um, yeah, I have some I have some ideas for Bilal. So I'm sure we will get him back in there. He's such an exciting fighter, and he has so much potential. And I just I want to see him rise to the top because I think I think eventually there's some really really good fights for him at CFFC. Yeah, I was part. I was there for his debut, and mm -hmm. um, it takes a lot to come across to the a whole other side of the country and upset the local kid. Um, and that was a, a big one because I think coming into it, being local to this area, uh, I didn't know much about Bilal, but I I knew Jerry, and yeah, um, that fight it showcased that he was he was ready for that pro move. So, um, I know he was leading to your last UFC fight. He was kind of like your main sparring partner and all that. So, uh, yeah. I was a little shocked and a little disappointed when I saw the non CFC for this weekend. Um, but glad to hear that we should hopefully be seeing him come in without breaking any like news there are there other fighters either from your gym or your area that you have like shortlisted that you are planning on bringing in or is it still kind of just as it rolls 
It's still up in there. We have a lot of, um, at my gym personally, I mean, obviously we have Chris Vassell who's fighting Jose Perez here in September. Um, but I have a lot of good guys, but we have a lot of amateurs right now. So I'm hoping if we do get into Washington that we do some Amy show, like some a part Amy show so I can get my guys um, some good looks. I have some girls too that I think would be really, really well fitted for CFFC, but just not quite ready yet. Uh, so yeah, I think, I think that there's some potential here. I have some other guys in the area that I think would be good. I'm not, I don't want to say any names just because I'm not a hundred percent sure what they're contractually obligated to or what their coaches want from them. But, uh, I don't think a lot of people would be turning down such a big opportunity like CFFC. Definitely on a lot of people's radars. Um, mm -hmm. which I thought was funny when there's a little Twitter feud with Brad, when someone said no one watches it. And I was like, okay um yeah <laughs> i know i'm a little biased and i mean i definitely flew to tunica mississippi which never even knew what tunica was until <laughs> i got there yeah, and i still same. don't know what it still don't know i just know there's i'm i still have mosquito bites and it's like two weeks later <laughs> uh but outside of that anything else in, in your role that we haven't touched on i think we kind of like mentioned the two that you mentioned the matchmaking anything yeah, else that i mean missed I mean, there's like a lot of just little miscellaneous stuff that I feel like I've just kind of fit in, like, you know, things that I like Rob has been taking care of so much for so long and I'm um, trying to take some of that just basic stuff off of his plate, like just little tisk task things that he shouldn't have to deal with. Um, so just helping out there and helping out anywhere I can and just trying to be available the, mo is the most like as much as I can and doing whatever they need for me believe our next official event is september it might be something in between hasn't yeah. been announced yet we'll see if it gets announced yeah <laughs> uh, outside of that um anything else you want to throw out there before we wrap up or no not really things? not really i just i just it's an honor to be back part of cffc like just being cage side and working these fights it reminds me like why i love fighting hearing the crowds hearing all those things and it's given me, you know, a little bit of like, do I have that itch again? Do I want to get back in there again? I, I would love to do like, you know, put the gloves in the middle and all of that stuff. And if it was going to happen, it would be with CFFC. So um, I don't know, but I, I definitely just love being a part of this company and being a part of this family. And I'm just happy to be here.